This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, we continue in Torah Devar. We're at the end of Parak Tess, ninth Parak. And the Torah Devar said that somebody who wants to unite with the daughter of the king, namely the Shechina, that the Shechina should not depart from a person. You need to adorn yourself with all kinds of adornments and beautiful clothing. And they are the Midois that we mentioned uh, above all the good midas. And after a person corrects themselves with the proper tikkunim, one should be makabal upon themselves to be oisik batayra. One should be makabal upon themselves when they are oisik batayra and they bear the yoke of mitzvahs in the essence of the kavana of yichud always. And by doing so, the shechina will, so to speak, cling to you and marry you and will not separate from you provided a person purifies and sanctifies himself. And then... Once a person is pure and holy, one should be mechavin to mechaim, the three mitzvahs that one has to his wife, one should have in mind to do that to the Shechina, namely She'er Ksus and Oina. Number one, She'er, to be mashpia and all of your maisim, Shefa from the right side, which is her mazoin. That refers to Limud HaToyra. As Rav Goldberg says, Toyra Masim Toivim are mazoinos for the Sphirois, as taught by the Magid Meisharim. Number two, Ksus, you need to cover up. What do you need to cover up? You need to cover up Midas HaGvura. To cover up from the vantage point of Gvura that it should not dominate, um, that a person should not give room for the Chitzoinim, and there should not be a Tzad of Yitzhahara in the Asek of one's mitzvahs, because wherever the Yitzhahara is Shoilet, the Shechina is not Shoira. So if you want the Shechina to be with you, to the extent that it's married to you, in a way that it doesn't separate from you, it has to be without Yetzar Hara. So without Yetzar Hara means without any Shalai Lashmaz, meaning a person should not have in mind for his own physical benefit or for any Kavod, because by doing so, the Yetzar Hara will be involved in that mitzvah and then the Shechina will depart, because a Shalai Lashma is like an Erva. Therefore you need to cover the Erva. Cover the Erva means to cover over and to hide any ulterior motive that it should not dominate you. Meaning all your actions should be L'shem Shamayim. Now in the Hakdamas V'Sha'arim, he says an interesting thing. In Tikkun Zayar, Tikkun Samach Tes, he says, the word Erva are the Oisiyais, Er, which is the opposite of Ra, Vav He. Ra, Vav He. Rabbi Yaakov, you hear this? Ra, Vav He. That uh, Er is the opposite of Ra, because all... A chimum that a person has, all desire for arayos, comes from the koyach hara. And what the koyach hara does is it's mafrid between the vav and the hay of the yudke vavke. What does that mean? Let's see what he says. What that means is, the um, vav of the shem havaya is keneged teferes. Which, by the way, teferes is kutshabrichu. Hey is Malchus. That's the Shechina. The Shechina is Malchus, right? This whole parak is parak Tess. How do you accustom yourself with Malchus? Meaning, how do you get the Shechina to be with you? So if there's one thing you learned about the Sphirois, is Malchus and Shechina are synonymous, okay? And Teferes and Kutshabrichu. So you want Teferes and, uh, and Malchus to be together, which is the Vav is Teferes and the Hey is Malchus. When the Kutshabrichu and the Shechina is together, the Shechina is in the world with great Shefa. But when there is Arayos, that's Mafred the Yichud. Okay, very interesting. Um, also, the Tarmid of says, Tefillin and Sitzis also is a great m- mugging and shield and cover that the Chitzonim do not rule over us. The Yerug Bahem and um, a person will be... Uh, um, a freak, one should accustom himself always to wear talis and tefillin. For our purposes, it means daily. Okay, let's see the, the third and final way that uh, one, one has to fulfill his obligation to the Nekeva, namely Shechina. We did share, we did Ksus, and we did Oina. This is very interesting. Um, when... When uh, I was in London for Shabbos, I davened by Rabbi Ilan Halberstadt. So he said over for Moshe Shapiro, what's the Indian of being koiveya itim l'toira? What's the, 
In other words, I'll learn whenever I have a free moment. But what's the concept of setting fixed times for Torah study? So he said that um, when Klai Yisrael were Mechabal the Torah, we said Nasa Venishma, we accepted it willingly. But Hashem said, no, that's not good enough. It's not good enough to learn Torah when it's good for you. I'm still going to shove it down your throats. I'm still going to force you into it. It's still going to be Kaf Alem Har As the Maral explains, because if we only accepted the Torah because we willingly accepted it, then you would think Torah is like an uh, ice cream cone. That, uh, you know why I learned? Because it's good for me. And when I don't think it's good for me, then I won't. No, we have to know the Torah is what gives life to the whole universe. If without the Torah, the world would cease to exist. So Hashem says, I can't allow you to think that this, the Torah could be discretionary. The Torah has to be coerced because otherwise the universe cannot exist. The concept of being koivea item la Torah is to recognize it's not enough to learn. It's not enough to learn when you want to, but what you need to do is um, you need to learn even if you don't want to. That's the concept of being koivea, koivea item la Torah. But we're about to learn in the Torah Medvara another Indian of being koivea item. You ready for this? The same way a person has a, a, a obligation to his wife of oina time, you have to make a fixed time to spend with your wife. So you need to be koivea item la Torah. When you set a time that right now it's five o'clock and uh, I have to stop everything I'm doing because I have a kvias or whatever it is, I have a shir or I have a chavrusa or and a person stops what they're doing to set a time, one should have in mind, this is my oina, this is my time that I have to give to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. L'yachta im You want to unite the Shechina with Tiferes, which we said Tiferes is Kut Shabrichu and, the, um, and Malchus is Shechina. So when do we give time to Tiferes? Be'oinas Kriya The time of Shema. Shema is a very specific time, in the morning and the night. Bikvias item la Torah. When we set times for Torah, let's say for tonight, eight thirty tonight. If you want to join the shir, that's a fixed time. Even if we don't start eight thirty, you still come on eight thirty. We'll be right with you as soon as we get everything together. But the time is eight thirty. Whenever you set a time for Hakadosh Baruch Hu, that is the you should have in mind. That's the oina. That's the, the Shechina is your Nikeva, you have to give her Oina, that is the fixed times you get. Yechavin Shezeu Oinas HaShechina Bas Malach, this is the fixed time of the Shechina, who is the daughter of the king, the Yesh Remez Lozeva Tikunim, and there is a Remez to this in the Tikune Zaya. So now we're going to have what we call the executive recap of um, Parak Tess, courtesy of Rav Nassim Weldler, thank you very much for this recap, and um, let's start. How does one accord oneself with Malchus? Um, Malchus is compared to the moon. The moon is uh, merely a reflection of the sun. So the Malchus is Makabel, all the Shefa from the above Sviros. It's like a mirror and reflects everything opposite to it. So basically a mirror, the clearer it is, the, the better reflector it is. So too, Malchus, the more humble it is, the more it has no entity of its own, it's able to reflect the upper spheros. Okay, so therefore the first aspect of acquiring Malchus is one should not be arrogant in anything and should consider himself a pauper. And as the Talmud Zavar said, uh, um, considering oneself without anything is a segula nifla'a for tefillah, right? The Lashon of the Talmud Zavar is that one should be machnia his heart, be ma'ana himself, Especially during tefillah, shazu segula nifla. This is a wondrous segula. And then the Torah Dvar says, one should think, like David Amalek said, that I'm all alone, that even family can only take us so far, but ultimately one, when they go to the next world, goes all alone. Only the Torah Mitzvah. Next, how do you acquire uh, Malchus? And that is, prava galos. One should exile himself and wander. Uh, l'shem shamayim. And what does going into galos accomplish? Now, the term of the Torah says one should do this because uh, to emulate HaKadosh Baruch Hu who is, who is in Golos and Rebbein Shalom is in Golos without any of his kalim and without any of his vessels and his ornaments. So one should um, go into Golos. And we explained from a number of Svarim quoting Rabbi Reisman's book the, the, um, 
the Milos of Golos and what Golos accomplishes, A, you have faith in Hashem, you're able to subdue one's anger, and you emulate HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So anytime you find yourself in an uncomfortable situation, let's say you travel far away and it's a really long and t- boring shear, so you should have in mind you're in Golos, and, uh, and or you have to go to the DMV, or you have to go to Great Adventures, Nabach on Chalamoid, if you allowed your children to coerce you into that uh, very grave situation. So have in mind that even though you're about to wait online to be shaken up and have your innards be dislocated, nevertheless, this is part of going into Gauls. Okay, then the next part of Malchus is Yira Shamayim, which is a gateway of all Avoida, and that is to fear HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and one should fear Hashem Himself and not any external forces because when one uh, fears external forces, one is empowering them. So what are the ways to fear Hashem? Number one, number one is, um, so again, the introduction is this comment that to be afraid of HaKadosh Baruch Hu Himself and now you might say, well, I'm afraid of a lion or a bear. That's because never has a lion or a bear said, ah, oh, never mind, I'm not really that hungry. I guess I'll go to kosher delight instead. No, no lion or bear ever said that. However, Hashem is very tolerant. So maybe a person will say, uh, why should I be so afraid of Hashem? So Tamar the Bar says, just because Hashem shows patience, that should not minimize our fear. Number two, Um, Hashem is always watching us. And just like a servant in his master's presence will always be afraid of the master, we too, who are always in Hashem's presence, who He knows our thoughts and motivations, um, we should be cognizant of Hashem's ever, um, ever constant uh, scrutiny. Number three is that... Hashem is the root of all souls, and all the souls are rooted in the Sphira. So when a person sins, he's actually sullying God's palace, and that should cause a person to fear acting improperly. And finally, number four, that one should realize that um, through one's improper actions, he pushes away the Shechina, and he could cause great evil to uh, separate between Kut and the Shechina. And one should be afraid of bringing this about. And finally, um, another way one should ensure that Malchus is always with him is one should uh, make sure that the Shechina clings to him by being together with his wife, by being married. That uh, without a Isha, a person on Adam Shalem. And therefore a person is always situated between two Nekevois. The lower one is physical. So the, the upper in a cave, Ashkina, supplies to you so that you could supply to your wife. So we know you have to give your wife um, food and clothing and marital obligations. So too, the two Nekevois are up in Shemayim, Bina and Malchus. Okay. Now there, we said there are three times a person's not uh, with his wife when she's a Nida or during the week during Liman Atayra or someone's on the road. So th- during those times, the Shechina is tied to a person, and the way to you ensure that is by um, learning Torah, the Torah Devarah said, and also by saying Tefillah Sadarach. Those two ingredients ensure that when you're on the road, the Shechina is always with you. Now, if you want to be Davik to the Shechina, and make sure the Shechina doesn't leave, you have to adorn yourself with the nice clothing of good Midas, and Limura Torah and accepting the yoke of mitzvahs, and one should bestow upon the Shechina the three obligations. She'er is Torah, Ksus to cover up Midas Hagvura, which is to do things uh, purely, not for ulterior motive, and Oina are the designated times that you give for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And then Bezos Hashem, tomorrow we begin the final parak of Taimar Devaira, and that is... Um, Parak Asiri, which we will see what Parak Asiri discusses. Mavra Baisai, until then, have a great day.
Yaakov. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.